Hello and welcome to Hack Central Money. This is Tanelia and we are here today with Paco Duna India talking about Bitcoin and how he has been using Bitcoin to tour the world. So, Paco, yeah. tell us a little bit about yourself. Alright, hi. Everyone. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, my name is Paco. I'm from India and about in August 2021, I read a book called The Bitcoin Standard. Uh, this book talks about the history of money and how our central banks are controlling us. And after reading the book, I really got inspired and I was like, all right, let's just do a trip around the world to see whether Bitcoin really is money. Because if I bring dollars to you, you will accept dollars. If I bring euros to you, you will accept euros. But if I bring Bitcoin to you, will you accept it? So I started the journey of traveling 40 countries in 400 days. But today is day number almost 700. <laughs> I have like gone way past because it takes time. Uh, so far I've traveled, this is the country number 30, Jamaica. 30? Yeah. Wow. Uh, I've got 10 more to go. I'll be finishing those 10 countries in the coming 6 months. And those will be about another 3, 4 in the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. And as I move south into the Southern America. Um, Bitcoin is a hope. It's a hedge against inflation. Mm -hmm. And I really hope every country, youth should learn about Bitcoin, study Bitcoin, mm -hmm. rather than buy Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's a little bit of a question. That's why we have you here today. Yes. But tell us, um, the countries that you're visiting, are these like first world countries? All of them are third world countries. Really? I've traveled to 18 African countries, 7 Asian countries, and 5 Latin American countries so far. And all of them have been challenging, like, because you just see money rules the world. It's not God, it's money. Everybody wants money. Mm -hmm. That's the period line. If you have money, you can buy everything in this world. You talk about happiness, but when you go to the church, you go to the God and the first thing you ask is like, please give me money. Everybody wants money and your money is being printed by your government. If you listen to your radio, Pool FM or Styles FM, they talk about how they are printing the new money, the new thousand, the new two thousand, the new five thousand, this piece of paper. Right. See, this yes. piece of paper. Right? We have some new money. It's rolled out this to Jamaica. Look at this one. <laughs> this one is printed in 2021. Okay. This is printed in, oh, this is printed in 2020. Check this out. This oh, wow, look at 20. that. We have the expiration dates on the money. This isn't printed in 2018. Hold on. This is 2018. That is a big one. Wow. I didn't notice this before. Actually. This is 2019. So wow. The, if you see every year, they're just printing money. Okay. Where's the big one? Yeah, that's the big one. $5,000. Yeah, let's see when did they print this. This one came in 2010 and they just printed again in 2023. New money. Now, this piece of paper is nothing because your government keeps printing money. What do you do with this? That's why your one dollar, when Jamaica got independence, one dollar was one Jamaican dollar. Mm -hmm. And today is how much? 155. That means your country has devalued you 155 times. The youth here is studying, working, praying, being honest, but cannot save any money, cannot dream at all. Bitcoin is a hedge against inflation. Read about it. Don't trust me. I'm just an Indian guy who is here running businesses, trying to make money off you guys. <laughs> Don't trust me. <laughs> Don't trust me. Study about it. Right. It's, there are a lot of resources available and just see if your government is just printing money. Can you stop them? You can't stop them. Can you question them? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Look at you. You're the youth. You're the people who are going to change this country's future. Three million Jamaicans. Yeah? Yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, I mean, what sort of, okay, so you're traveling third world countries, yes. right? And obviously, I know some Jamaicans, a lot of Jamaicans are not so keen on cryptocurrency yeah. and Bitcoin, you know, it was the last hype that nobody thinks still exists. What kind of difficulties do you have when you came to Jamaica with your Bitcoin? Ah, uh, man, I got lucky on the first day. My Uber driver accepted Bitcoin. I was surprised. The pizza place accepted Bitcoin. I was able to do a P2P transaction. Wait, 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 what's it Your taxi driver yeah, accepted Bitcoin? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I think you should get the taxi drivers. This should give out his phone number. <laughs> <laughs> He's very innovative. Yeah. I need to know him. Yeah. But the pizza place, where was that? It was, it's a place called Pizza Please. It's below Glories. Oh, yes. They're they a new. Yeah, they accept Bitcoin there. Okay, they're a new pizza spot. That's yeah. great. That's awesome. Yeah, so it's like this. But I went to Ocho Rios. Nobody. It's a cash-rich economy. You, I think so. Jamaican dollars are way too much complicated. People use dollars. Like even if you go to any hotels or restaurants, they are like in US dollar prices. Yes. So it's a big challenge. I think so your country, I highly doubt, is going to adopt any of this. But your government is going to come with your CBDC. 
That's a central mm-hmm. bank digital currency. Mm-hmm. They're gonna shove it up your throat. They're gonna like you have to accept it, and they will control your money. That's what I saw. Your country, Jamaica, has an attitude. Mm-hmm. It's like an attitude of a lion. You're like, hey, you don't mess with us. It's not my fault. It's your problem. Right. <laughs> and it's gonna be a big challenge because it's a very small country. So everybody knows everybody. You know. And there's a lot of ego clashes, mm-hmm. but Bitcoin doesn't care. See, Bitcoin doesn't need you. Bitcoin doesn't need anyone. You need Bitcoin, mm-hmm. and this is what Jamaicans will see because it is a true value of freedom. If this is what the Rastafari is, it's about freedom where nobody controls your money. As of now, let's say I will ask you a question. Let's say in your bank you have ten million Jamaican dollars, right? Go to the bank after this and ask them. Give me five million. Exactly. I can't get five million from the bank. Exactly. <laughs> they, even if it's your money, yeah. they will say no. No, I can only take out a hundred thousand cash. Yeah. There you go. Go back to your parents' house. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, what's your hope for for Bitcoin, really, from your experience using it and you know your engagement with it, trying to use it? Oh man, I have used Bitcoin from Nigeria to South Sudan. I've used it in Thailand. I've used it in Dubai. I've used it in Singapore. I've used it in Costa Rica, Brazil. Um, slowly and gradually, the people, because this is a voice, for the first time, this voice cannot be shut down because it is decentralized. Let's say this area is all controlled by one switch of a button: electricity. If I switch it off, it's all gone, right? Right, but Bitcoin is decentralized. It's running in different parts of the world. So there are going to come up circular economies in the world that are going to adopt Bitcoin. When I say circular economy, I mean uh, an economy where people are using Bitcoin between themselves. Example: Costa Rica. Mm-hmm. There's a community called Bitcoin Jungle. So the farmer to the restaurant to the customer all are using Bitcoin. That's a alternative way of living. There's a similar economy in Brazil, mm-hmm. there's in Guatemala, El Salvador, South Africa, Philippines, Vietnam. So there are these various places around the world that people are just using Bitcoin between themselves. They do not care what's happening outside right. because it's freedom at the end of the day. So this is what I see and I really hope the Caribbean islands, but you're in an island, you know, I've just come from Cuba and when you're on an island, the government has all the control over you. Can't help it. Like, I mean, not even Bob Marley coming back can help it. <laughs> oh boy! What well, you know? I'm hearing that it's a decentralizing force, and I'm getting the feeling that you know, if we go back to those days when you could, I had milk and you had, um, you yeah. know, corn, and yes. I could say, well, exchange my milk for your corn, and yes. we keep this kind of close community. We could go to something, a uh, community building, something yes. like that, but it could be global. Yeah. What What can you say to the entrepreneur in Jamaica? I mean, I know that there's a there's a there's a attitude in Jamaica towards cryptocurrency, which is basically it's a scam. We don't want to trade with it. I, I don't know if I want to try to you know invest in it or anything like that. What can you say to the, the Jamaican investor? You know, to kind of have them open up your or ask a question about you know what could Bitcoin do for their business and in the industry here. Um. Uh, we should start seeing this in a global aspect. Uh, it's not about 200 countries anymore. It's about 250,000 communities around the world. Mm-hmm. Leave the borders. Think about communities. Now, Bitcoin can move between countries without any bank's permission. I can sell you Bitcoin right now. It doesn't matter if you're black, white, brown, Hindu, Muslim, Christian. It doesn't matter what caste, what creed, what color, what religion you are. Mm-hmm. Bitcoin moves. So if the entrepreneurs start seeing what Bitcoin can do, and even if they start reading about it, their business will expand more than just the Caribbeans, but into a global level because Bitcoin gives you a chance to receive payment rather than going through the tedious process of banks and PayPal where they can censor you. Censorship was the biggest problem in our thing. They censor everything. If you have money, and Jamaica, the land of scams, they say, they say, say foreign. <laughs> they say that in Nigeria too. But the youth is really powerful and it doesn't mean all apples are rotten, you know. There is that one or two rotten apples. And Bitcoin is used as a synonym to all the other crypto coins. All the other crypto coins, there are over 25,000 coins. How do you trust? You can't trust anyone in this world now. 
Yeah, don't trust, verify. Do your own research. Do your own research and start reading. There's a very there are a lot of podcasts, a lot of books available for free online. Start reading. Do not get carried away and don't trade. I don't trade Bitcoin. I believe your paper money is going to zero. I believe that you saw it. They're printing every month, and if they keep printing, so you're just working and working and working and working. You're like a donkey. Yeah, no matter how much you get paid each year, no matter how much extra is like giving, like you're getting less and less money exactly. every year. So. And you can't, you can't, you can't do anything, and you're stuck on an island. What do you do? Yeah, it's your choice. <laughs> well, thank you so much, much for coming, Paco. Thank you so much. And thank you so much for sharing. I know that you have an event today, yeah. this morning, at um, the UCC, and you're going to talk to students and, and all the Bitcoin and, and cryptocurrency enthusiasts about, you know, what Bitcoin can do for the Jamaican economy and globally. So thank you very much for so much. joining us today. And I hope I wish you all the best for your presentation you later. So all right. Thank you. Have a good one. Thank you so much.